Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna to be looking at those chronically tight hip adductors that are causing your inner knee pain or that groin pain that you're having. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. It does not get much better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be looking at chronically tight hip adductors, which could be causing groin pain or knee pain at the inner side there. And there's two very important things that we need to understand when it comes to chronically tight hip adductors. The first is gonna be the foot. If our foot is chronically collapsed inward, that is going to cause our knee to malalign and the adductors to be chronically tight and shortened in that position. So if we do not correct the foot and we have chronically tight adductors and we have limited foot mobility, we're always gonna have those chronically tight adductors. So I'll link a video up above here so that you can start to work on your foot mobility and do that separately throughout the day to overall improve your base to help your hips out. Now the second part is the hip itself. Oftentimes our adductors are stronger than our abductors and we have poor control of the hip itself. And this could also be feeding why our foot is collapsing realistically. There's a cyclical relationship between the hip and the foot. And if our hip isn't functioning to its fullest, it can affect the foot negatively. And if our foot is negatively impacting our hip reverse, that can do the same. So we're gonna be looking at some mobilities here to get the hips open and ways that you can get past that chronic tension, mainly from the hip. I got the video linked for the feet. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is work on centrating the hip in the socket. So we're gonna use a band anchored to your bar up above. And we're gonna lower ourselves down so it's across the glute diagonally on one side like a climbing harness here. We also have a 45 pound plate that we're gonna put into action here. And we're putting our feet together almost like a diamond. So our hips, knees, and feet make that diamond shape with the legs. Placing the plate on the inner thigh of the leg that's banded, you're gonna lie back and get yourself settled. So we wanna make sure that we're really opening that side that has the plate on it as much as possible, as well as the side that is free. That side, we wanna make sure that the pelvis is touching on both sides, so I shouldn't be rotating my body to allow this to happen, the plate on the other side. You'll notice that you might find some tension at the inner thigh pretty much immediately here. And what you're gonna do is actively flex up into that plate for about five seconds. You wanna give your maximal contraction on that inner thigh, flexing it up, and then when you feel five seconds is up, you're gonna release that and allow the leg to open up further. You can see me doing it right there in that shot. So five seconds, I'm flexing up into the plate, and then I'm gonna allow it to go passively deeper into the stretch that I'm getting here at the inner thigh, while that band is pulling my hip into a good position centered in the joint. My shoulder blades are rolled down and back. My abs are engaged. I wanna make sure I'm not arching my low back a nice neutral spine in that position as I work here. And we're gonna do at least two minutes per side with this plate loaded position. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do some self-myofascial release on those adductors using the bar and the squat rack. So here I have my bar up on the safeties just below hip height. So I do lower down into a little bit to apply the pressure to those inner tissues. And I'm gonna roll all the way up from my inner groin 
down in toward the knee. Now you can see me playing with some different movements and motions where I feel tender points to the tissues. So as I feel the pressure on the tissues there, I'm gonna extend the knee and bend it. And then I'm also gonna internally and externally rotate the hip. So that'll look like moving my foot upward and downward at that bent 90 degree angle position of the knee. Try the different ranges, find those tender points. And on those tender points, you're gonna try these different movements, the ext uh, extension of the leg and the internal and external rotation of the leg in that position. Give it about two minutes per side, allowing things to really settle in and work. And you should notice a pretty immediate difference in the discomfort that you feel to the tissues of that pressure. Lastly, we're going to stretch and strengthen and we're going to do two different positions here. Here we're going to do it in hip flexion. So I'm loading up two kettlebells, 35 pounds, one on each inner thigh at the knee there just above. And I'm going to flex into those kettlebells. Now my arms are applying pressure down when I do that flex as well as lifting up a little bit. So you'll see the knees lift some. I'm pushing back down into my knees from my arms with the weight of the kettlebell for about five seconds. And again, I'm going to release and you'll see that I gain extra range of motion here. So watch the depth of my knees as I open up and I've already gained that range of motion. So that is a quick way that we're gonna to start to open up that range of motion through that contract and relax method. So now I'm gonna do it at the lower level. Five seconds, drive the knees up into the weights, push down from the hands, resist that load, and then release again. And you should see once again that the knees open a little bit deeper. So each time we're gonna take some ground from that method right there. My butt is in the corner here. My heels are as close to my body as I can get them with the bottom of my feet touching here. Your feet will start to open up a little bit as your hips open up more. That's how they're supposed to work. And that's what we wanna see. And lastly, we're gonna strengthen with the hips in extension as well. Strengthen while we lengthen here. So we're loading up a glided position here. One foot is on a solid base. So I'm using my right leg here to actually push off that solid ground and help myself open up. I need to be very conscious here that my glutes are in full extension. I'm flexing and driving my glutes tight. So my pelvis is coming forward toward the camera here. My shoulder blades are rolled down and back and I'm stacked with my shoulders over my hips. When I reach that position where I feel like I can no longer control the range or it's starting to get a little bit questionable, I'm gonna place that kettlebell down on the ground and I'm going to assist myself back up to the starting position. So we're only doing the eccentric version of this loading and lowering in as deep as we can go and then resetting the position each time and starting back up. I would recommend about 10 reps to start if you can. All right, and there you have it. A quick and simple mobility approach that you can use to start to open up those chronically tight adductors and fix that whole system of the leg overall. One, make sure you're addressing the feet and any issues that are going on there so you have a good base so the hip can function at its fullest. Two, address the hip joint itself. 
three, adjust those soft tissues in between the hip and the knee there that are chronically tight, and then four, strengthen and stretch at the same time. Once you've got that all put together, you should be good to go. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend who is chronically struggling with those tight adductors, has groin issues, knee issues at the inner side there, whatever it might be, pass it their way. If you are somebody who struggles with training aches and injuries, or you just simply want to improve the way that you move overall and set a solid foundation for your workouts so that you can avoid training injuries in the long run and be more resilient and recover quicker, what I want you to do is drop down below in the description here so that you can fill out the coaching application form and we can see if you're a good fit for the muscle and mobility wad. This is a 12 week program that helps you improve the mobility. If you have any injuries currently, we'll help you work out of those and will improve your overall mobility and function so that you can be performing at your best. So drop down below, fill that out, and I'll get in contact with you. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. See you next week.